Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. Sorry about that, the sound was off. Let me know that you can hear me, that would be really great. I hope everyone is having a good day. Right now we have uh, Colette, and I see Jesus and Steven, how are you guys? And uh, so how's the sound? I just had to uh, fix it. Uh, so the sounds good? Let me just uh, write in here. How is the sound? Sound. Oh, I spelled sound wrong. Okay, great. So you guys could hear me. That's great. So good to see Stephen, Jesus, Colette. Thank you so much for coming here on a Saturday. So that is good. Sounds perfect. Thank you so much, Stephen. I appreciate that. So today we are working on this pastel. And I'm really happy to share it with you guys and uh, share her with you. And let me go ahead and show you all here make this small and make her big here let's see put it there okay great so I have that like this so that's good and so hey mr. Roy color graphics and John Payne how you doing good to see you guys so glad you guys can make it here so I appreciate that and so we are working on this young lady here, uh, Katya. She is an amazing concert pianist. She specializes in uh, Franz Liszt, Rachmaninoff. I mean, just amazing, amazing. I don't know how to pronounce her name. I'm going to learn. That's going to. I want to learn how to pronounce her name, definitely. But uh, a rose by any, any other name is still a rose, right? That's what they say. So today we are working on this pastel. This pastel is 11 by 14 on wood panel. And what I did to actually do pastel on wood is I applied my gesso and marble dust mixture and put that on first. And now we can go ahead and do as many layers as we want. It accepts uh, just, just accepts pastel like it was made for pastel and pastel was made for this surface so that's cool thank you Colette I appreciate that and thank you John I really appreciate that so thank you so much guys and so now we're just going to uh, we're still using pretty much only these guys which is the which are the pastel pencils by Faber-Castell and also Credit Color makes uh, fine art pastel pencils. So I'm using those two sets, select colors, and uh, so we're going to go right into it. Let me make her a little brighter so you can see. And of course I could always zoom out and zoom in. So this is the whole picture which is really cool to see that and then we can go in like that and then zoom in even further so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue uh, working on her clavicle area so let's do that together I'm going to zoom in and then I could come out here and come over here like this so we can see right here it's quite hard edged and it doesn't need to be that hard edge actually I have to calm that down not sure quite how I'm going to approach it, but we'll do that together. Let's make this a tad lighter. There we go. And we'll just move this, make, move me out of the way. And let me bring up a reference in Pure Ref. Where are you? There she is. Okay. All right. So looking at this area of her pectoralis muscle coming down here, I have to make sure that I don't make it too hard edged, right? So let's go ahead and uh, work on this together. 
All right, so I need to soften that up first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the eraser to kind of soften up my underpainting. So just like when I work in, in uh, airbrush, whether it's an India ink or acrylic, I would go to actually uh, doing small circular motions right on that spot where it's hard edged and I'm just going to soften that up. Sort of uh, plowing the field I always say which is really important. And so you have to step back sometimes to go forward. So now I want to First, do the lighter color, which is that kind of orangey terracotta color, like right here. And I'm just going to lightly go over where that hard edge was. Maybe I could lighten it one more time. There we go. And then I'm going to assimilate that into our skin color. Sort of walking it back there like this. So basically we're going to pull this over with this kind of mid-tone. And then we can establish the dark value right next to that. And I don't want to go too dark. So this is a kind of uh, raw umber color. And so we're going to come over here and pay attention, you know, to whether it's uh, a thick, a thick mark or it's it's thin. Uh, check the, you know, if it's opaque or if it's transparent. Everything that I teach in airbrush, all the same principles apply. There's no difference. I'm going to come back with that terracotta color pull this over just a little bit and as I zoom out you'll see how see this area that I'm working on right now right you see how I'm just kind of working those values together Keep going back and forth. Okay. And now we have this lighter color, uh, which is just inside here. We have this lighter value, plus we have this orangey color coming over here so let's make that happen as well so we have this sort of this color right here is uh, 1122 113 kind of an orangey color a light orange and we're just going to make its presence known here Bear with me, there's a method to my madness here. Oh. Now I'm looking for that really beautiful, nice yellow color. It's like a, a nice light yellow. Let's see if I can find it. If I can't find it, it's usually underneath something, right? So. Let's see if I can locate it. Got it. Love this color. 
This one right here is really nice. I use it a lot in portraits. It's 1122-103. And as you can see, I'm just going to pull this over and kind of bring this over, this light color. Hey Rick, how you doing? Thank you, sir. So glad you're here. Cool to see Rick. Now, if you ever see like, okay, you're getting a little too orangey, you know, or too red or too blue, I have something to show you what I use all the time in such situations. I mean, it's very important. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it. And this will be a lifesaver. So let's say I'm too orange, right? Like this color right here. It's a little too orange, and I want to calm that down. Well, one of these are really important. And... When you're working in color, you this is color science, right? So anyone who has worked with me knows I'm a pretty scientific painter. So you want to find its complement to calm it down. So we have this orange, and if we go straight, it's kind of a bluish color. So what I'm going to do is actually find that bluish color, and this could probably be the best way to calm it down. I'm going to start with a light blue color and we'll see how it reacts. Let's take a look. Let me change the ISO because it's too dark. I'll change the ISO to 100, 800 and now I could get the desired value I want. And so see I have this blue and I want to calm down this orange. And you see if I just slowly assimilate this blue over this orange, it kind of calms it, it does calm it down because it will actually block a lot of the reflection of the orange, the orange light waves. And so it kind of neutralizes it. And you can see I can do that elsewhere. So let's say if I want to come down here and calm down perhaps this this orange right here this blue that we established will actually calm that down without destroying the chromatic value right without making it muddy so you want to make sure that you use a color that will neutralize it but will not create mud which is just you know this dingy ugly brown color this still has life and vibrancy we just calmed it down, you know? Oh, thanks, John. These are, these are definitely art school techniques, you know? These are things that, you know, when, when we're trained, you know, in the academies and everything, we have whole classes which are just dedicated to uh, color theory, right? So, you know, for a whole semester, we're just playing with color and the science of color. So that's the advantage I had, you know, going to art schools. And now I can give that to you guys. And so that makes me happy. Kind of opening those doors to you guys, you know. And now if I zoom out, we can see just how much we calm this down. Let's move this over, come down. further back so yeah you can definitely see how that really calms down these colors right and then if I even zoom out further we can do the same thing over here so I might want to push the envelope sometimes and go really orange right just knowing that I'm going to kind of have that interplay with the complement color anyway 
And what that does, it kind of creates a uh, vibration, which is really nice. And you don't see it as much in on camera, but in person you really see that vibration of colors, which is really quite fascinating. Thank you, Roy. I appreciate that. And thank you so much, Colette. And, and John, I appreciate it. So now I can come in with that, uh, that kind of light yellow that I love so much. And I can just ease this in here just very slowly, right here. Just paying attention to my one second rule, right? You have so much more. Now this is an in, this is a uh, airbrush underpainting using the uh, the Createx and my sepia inks, and uh, and you can see just how well the uh, airbrush and the pastel work together. Really, really cool. And let's see. Uh, uh, John says, Steve, think of it as a painting instead of a drawing, and it will make sense. And uh, Steve says, uh, oh, Steve says he's been trying to learn the way that I hold pencils. Tim, you make it look easy, but it makes a big difference. You know, it's funny, uh, you know, how I hold a pencil is not even the way I was taught, Steve. It just kind of happened over the years, you know, because first we hold it like this, and then, you know, just, you know, holding it like this, it just seems you know how you can manipulate the pressure and that's what it is it's all about manipulating the pressure on it right so that's the main thing but but just continue working and it'll come to you it'll definitely come to you the main thing is is to try and uh, really control that pressure so if I want more pressure you can see I'll hold it regular like this and I'll just give it more pressure if I want it a little dark over here. I'll do that. Just like so. And now we have our packing peanuts, which are amazing. And let me go get them. Remember, they're so inexpensive. Ooh, maybe a little more of that orangey color right here before I go ahead and start blending in a little bit. Now the advantage of working with something like I have here is, you know, with my surface, is that I could do so many layers. It's unbelievable. So right now I'm just going to worry about the orangey colors. I'm just going to blend the orange colors right now. And then I'm going to blend the dark into the orange color. I can use the other side. Just like so. And now I'm doing the dark, so. peanut here and work the orange into the light like this and notice that you know when I talk about airbrushing I'll say a lot you know you have to follow the grain of the skin the same is applies to pastels you know what I mean same thing so side actually a new pastel peanut backing peanut and kind of assimilate that take the other side and let's do the see how I work it back and forth right see how we do that and hey Jewel how are you great to see you I'm so glad you're here so Jewel and Orit you guys are fantastic 
So thank you so much for uh, coming by on a Saturday. I really appreciate that. Jewel, you are the best. One of the great things, uh, if uh, Esatino Media, if anyone's out there and they ever want to learn how to uh, make their online businesses grow or, or learn how to be a YouTuber, because it's very daunting, right? It's so difficult. But they break it down so easily. And they have this live stream on their group, uh, as on their channel, Esatino Media. And uh, every Thursday, they have a mastermind group. And I always try to get there whenever I can. And I always come away so inspired and so pumped up. And in this world, if you can be more inspired, uh, then that's so amazing. So they're amazing, Jewel and Ori. So thank you so much for hanging out. Just wanted to let everyone know how amazing you are. Mike, how you doing? Great to see you. Wow, so uh, you got a lot of catching up to do, Mike. Yeah, started doing little pastel, just trying to shake things up a little bit, right? You know, when the, uh, uh, just want to, you know, keep everybody honest, so to speak, by just breaking into pastels. Who knows, one day I may be doing pencil or, or acrylic, or you just never know. So that's really wild. So right here we have this area right here. So you see how rough it is? And we don't want it to be, uh, we definitely don't want it to be something that is very hard edged, you know? Oh, that's my pleasure. I'm just, I'm just stating facts, uh, Jewel. You guys are doing great things. And uh, I'm a better, better person and YouTuber for going to your live streams and, and joining your your uh, your your class uh, it started out as the SEO learning how to how to get more traffic to your YouTube channel and uh, that has helped me immensely too so just just amazing all around now I'm going to come in here and you see how if I zoom in you'll see what I mean you see how this is kind of kind of robotic and when you have nature everything is organic meaning that there is this sort of chaotic order right orderly chaos and that's the way like you know branches you know you know how how branches kind of branch out they don't they're not in perfect order or sequence but there is a kind of chaotic order that's into it and uh, that's what we're trying to do when I have something like this you know and you see here how it's it went on the yellow side so again if I want to get rid of yellow right how do we do that so let's zoom out so I want to get rid of yellow and how we get rid of yellow is we have this handy dandy color wheel and we look for that yellow and it's kind of like a, a yellow orange and we just line this up yellow orange we go straight down it's going to be a blue violet so I'm going to look for a blue violet and that'll go with this uh, Here's kind of like a bluish violet right here. So what I can do is I can just take this bluish violet and then just glaze over this. And you see it immediately calms down that color. Just immediately. Which is really wild. So that's something that, you know, you learn how to do that. Yes, Colette, exactly. Very true. Very true. Very good. So Colette is knowing all that, right? She's, she's one of my students and she's learning uh, the science of color, which is really important. Okay, so I'm gonna come back in with that beautiful yellow that I love. This is 1122-103. Uh, and we're just gonna bring this up. 
like so. And just kind of get this edge here. Remember the chaotic order, right? That's the way nature is. Um, we as humans try to replicate God's thoughts, but we can never. So his ways are greater than our ways. So, you know, as people, we tend to want to make everything orderly in our limited capacity. And I think that's where we get in trouble when we're painting people or anything in nature, right? We have to really realize that we don't go by our own inclinations when reproducing nature. Mike says, not to distract from the lesson, but that is exactly the converse of how I deal with blue shift. Interesting. Yeah, so, so basically, uh, this is uh, exactly, so blue shift is actually using the complementary color of, of uh, blue with orange, exactly. So doing the exact opposite, but still the same, the same principle is applying, right? So lately, I would say the last year, I'm finding that to be a portrait painter is actually very close to being a physicist in a lot of ways. And, you know, I share that with my students and even in my live streams, I talk about how we have to understand light to paint light, right? If we if we don't understand what we're painting, then basically we're just copying. But I would much rather, if I'm painting a portrait, I would much rather know about that person and to say something about the, uh, that person. Oh, not your method, but Drew's. Yes, yeah, so Drew's color theory is definitely on the same lines as that, you know. Uh, same, The same exact thought processes, you know, that is... Uh, you know fighting the blue shift but here's here's a wonderful thing when you use this technique of doing uh, airbrush and pastel on top you don't have any blue shift problems those are just they're gone they don't exist so how amazing is that so I'm gonna be doing a lot more of combining airbrush and pastels and so that's going to be the Wednesday, the Wednesday live stream is just going to be straight airbrush, right? With my India ink and the Extreme Patriot Arrow. But the Saturday nights are going to be more in this area here. And as you can see, I can definitely make things a lot more subtle, but that comes in time, right? So I'm just going to soften this up, get these shapes that... I was working so hard to get earlier. So now I'm two live streams a, a week now. So double the uh, art education for everybody, which I think is in this day and age, that's really amazing. I'm not holding anything back. You're getting the whole thing, the whole enchilada, I guess you would say. Let me come here. So here's a sternocleidomastoid that comes down here. And... Oh, uh, <laughs> Jesus says, uh, Tim and I talk a bunch more than what we paint, which I love. Oh, it's great hanging out with you, my friend. Yeah, you know, my students, you guys are like, like my friends, you know? Uh, it's always great just hanging out with you, you all and just uh, getting to know you and knowing you guys it's really fantastic uh, double the fun in the group class <laughs> thank you sir I appreciate that see all this has to be very much more subtle but we'll get there Rome isn't built in a day it takes time Right here this comes down here and then right here we have 
where the sternocleidomastoid comes down and I believe this is the trachea trachea but Rick ah oh, thank you Jewel I appreciate that thank you Jewel with the super sticker I appreciate it thank you that means a lot to me oh my goodness I am so honored thank you that is the coolest and she says uh, keep the arts alive <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Jewel is a very creative creative person she does a lot of creative things um, I, I know you were doing the diamond painting which was really cool and uh, you're into video and uh, so many different things so many creative outlets I think that's one of the reasons why we're youtubers is that we have all these outlets to be creative whether it's photography or videography or uh, you know making the thumbnails and all these different things so so yeah I, I know I'm just the same as Jewel like always looking for new ways to express myself creatively and that's why I think I was so terrible in the business world because they're about as creative in the corporate world as a box of hammers, you know? So true. Oh, so, so Jewel says she recently made Tetris pieces out of wooden blocks. Oh, how cool. I did see you start working on that. I can't wait to see the finished product. Maybe on Thursday night on your live stream. That is wild. Yeah, and you used to play Tetris. You know, the funny thing about Tetris, I don't know if you guys saw uh, Office Space. I love that movie because I was like in that cubicle hell when I was working in Amazon. Subsequently, before that, uh, Nextel and, you know, just a lot of really yucky jobs. But in that one thing, he's the boss is like, hey... Uh, you know maybe we should talk and he's playing Tetris and he goes to the boss I gotta need you to come back later I'm really busy <laughs> I would love to have done that to my bosses when I worked at uh, Amazon oh man that would have been great so that's really neat yeah that you gotta see the stuff that uh, Jewel makes for when she celebrates her and her and Arid celebrate the milestone. I believe you made a cake for 40, cupcakes for 40,000? Something culinary, I remember. But you're closing in on 50,000, I know that, right? If I'm not mistaken. There we go. And we'll come back with this orangey color over here. Now I'm going to stay over here a little while long, but I don't want to get too fixated on this area. So I'm just going to keep moving around, which is cool. Oh yes, YouTube cup, YouTube cake shaped as the play button for 30,000. That was really wild. I love that. That was good. Did it taste good? It looks good, but did it taste good, Jewel? Let's move on over to this trachea here. Trachea? Trachea. Not an easy word. But English is my, my mother tongue, so I should be able to say trachea without trouble. Ah, it tasted amazing. Cool. Yes, especially hitting 30,000 made it even taste better, which is an amazing, amazing milestone. I'm still, um, I think I'm still 89 away from 4,000 subscribers, but it's been getting really slow lately. The growth has really slow down oh okay so we can definitely 
move over here. So if we look at the values between here and here, we can see that this is a lighter value. So I'm not going to go as dark as her armpit, but I may come over here and sort of work on this part of her trapezius muscle right here. Uh, Mike says, uh, but somehow two by two uh, thumbs of white just doesn't work all that well. Oh, okay, Mike, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, okay, so Colette says, don't forget to hit the like. Oh, okay, cool, cool. All right. A lot of times I come into some of the con uh, comments and I'm like, uh-oh, I don't know the whole story. So I think Mike was having a conversation with Colette. So I think that's what that is. So the other day I went during golden hour to a park down where I live and I took my camera and worked with a 10 millimeter lens and it was just really great to do something just totally different creatively and not be worried about having it look perfectly but just to explore things on just a pure creative uh, way of thinking was really fun. And you have to do that, right? We have to... Oh, Firefly reference. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, when I was doing that, just shooting with my DSLR using a 10 millimeter lens to do landscapes uh, at the park, it was just so liberating not to have to worry about, you know, everything being perfect technically, just to explore a new medium. For me, I've always been, you know, always had a camera and always took pictures on a semi-serious level. But I would say over the last six months or so, I really have been taking it to a next kind of much deeper level because it helps my portrait painting. And that has been really great. Uh, so I love... I love the camera and I love the science behind the light of the camera and that's really making a big difference in my work and in my teaching because if we understand light more it just makes everything so much more accessible as to what's happening and you can see as we're working on her shoulder she's becoming much more natural looking right and let me move this light over just a little bit like that and and then everything comes just looks more relaxed working in pastel pencils as opposed to the normal ways I mix the pastels and apply the colors onto the surface when you're working in pastel pencils you're kind of glazing color on top of another right so it's a little bit different and then over here I'm just gonna very lightly come over here with this wonderful color which is so definitely this color 1122-103 is going to be a very important color for you when working in portraits okay because you don't want to use white white is something you use very sparingly when you are doing uh, any kind of color whether it's pastel or oils or acrylic I think Angra said you use white as sparingly as ultramarine blue when you're painting a portrait. So I take everything Angra says, uh, you know, to heart because to me he was one of the greatest painters that ever lived.
man. He is definitely my favorite. So I'm going to put his name down here in the comments so you all can see. So his name is Jean Auguste Dominique Angra. Let me see. So I believe he was born in 1780 to, I think, something, now this is ballpark figure, 1780 to around 1865, more or less. And he was one of the main uh, proponents or members of uh, neoclassicism, which was a... Uh, you know, a time period of art, and it was really fantastic. Oh, so Jewel asked how long I do uh, uh, live streams for. So I have a two-hour live stream on Wednesday, but this one is only for an hour, the pastel one. I like the Wednesday ones because I could really go and do a deep dive. And this one's really good because I decided to keep the pastel one just one hour because I, I want to sort of uh, wet the appetite of a lot of the uh, airbrush artists to go into pastel, you know. So I don't want to go too deep because I don't know, uh, you know, how people are going to respond to it. And, you know, it's hard. Some people... But that's okay. I know I'll speak to uh, whoever really enjoys it and wants to explore it. And the great thing is, is that now in my mentorship classes, I'm teaching that migration from learning the airbrush to going into color with pastel. It's just a far more, far more easy transition than going into color with just the airbrush. I teach that as well, but I find that if someone wants to have a much smoother transition from working from black and white into color, then the best way in all the painting mediums is definitely learning black and white with the airbrush and then pastel on top of that as an underpainting. It really is. To me, I think I wished I had that way of learning painting because color is so much more. Mr. Dickman, how are you? Go, so great to see you. So, man, so Mr. Dickman, uh, John is uh, out of uh, Wisconsin, so it's always a pleasure to see you. And you see now, I'm sort of blending in these little soft values. And when I'm working in pastel I'm always setting up right so I always put down the values next to each other and then blend them in however when I'm doing my other technique which is the pastel palette method I basically mix the colors on the surface I mix the colors on the palette and then go on the surface which is cool oh cool so uh, Steve says uh, uh, oh, Jesus says, have you used cotton swabs to do the blending? They just, it's a great idea, but what happens is, is that when you see this surface, it's kind of like a bone texture, like a rough bone, and you'll see that the, uh, this will just kind of tear it up, but I think it's okay to try it if you want, but with these packing peanuts, See, the problem with this is that it will pick up too much of the pastel. However, with these little foam peanuts, it kind of just uh, blends them and doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't pick up too much. As you can see, it doesn't pick up too much of the uh, pastel from the surface. You want to keep that pastel on the surface. So you see right now, I'm just looking for the dark areas. And I'm kind of blending them in, which is cool. And so this side was the dark. Now I'm going to go for that mid-tone orange. And we'll just 
slowly blend this in. And I'm not just going to be happy like, okay, I blend it in. No, I'm going to come back and forth with different values, right? And that's what's important, back and forth with different values. So right here, we have to separate this arm here. So this arm comes down here, which is going to bring this dark, bring this over. Here we have a beautiful dark. We'll just put that right there. Just like so. Hey Blue, how you doing? Great to see you. How have you been? So I'm so glad you're here. Blue is out of Long Island, which I went to college at in Long Island. I went to Southampton College my freshman year. And that was a cool experience. I love Long Island. It has a really different feel from other parts of New York. It really does. My Aunt Joan and my Aunt Margie lived out there and it was always so much fun to go out and see them which is really neat so that is cool. And fresh peanut. Now these peanuts you can get from Sometimes Staples has them. They didn't have them lately, but you can go to the UPS store and they sell a big old box of these for, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, $8. And that'll last you a while unless you're, you know, painting like a crazy amount like I am. It'll probably last you about six months. But I think most people in the world don't paint as much as I do. And, uh... We'll bring this down. So what I want to do is I want to lighten this up. And what I can do, I can do one of two things. I can lighten it up with more pastel or I can erase it. So I'm going to choose to erase the pastel and then come back. So I'm going to take a piece of my kneaded eraser. And let's see right over here and we'll just lighten this up here so this way we can see that shoulder very important and then I can come back with value right so there was two ways I could have put more pastel on there this surface will accept a lot of layers of pastel but remember you always want to get to the color with the least amount, mixing the least amount of colors to get to a color. Reason being is that every time, scientifically, that you put one color on top of another, you're going to lose chromatic value. And as you put one color on top of another over and over again, it basically all the colors kind of negate one another and you get this kind of muddy color. And how you keep your colors very rich and vibrant is to uh, limit the amount of colors that you're using to mix the ultimate arrival, whatever color that is. Oh, thank you, Blue. I appreciate that so much. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, John says this guy is freaking amazing uh, I don't know uh, who you're speaking of but if you're speaking of me thank you um, but you guys are all amazing and see how how much more that was a, a very good decision to basically calm that down and uh, you know erase that and then bring this over now remember I did this painting this in this sepia I did it like a year or two ago I think maybe two years ago I did this and then I decided when to start doing the uh, oh thank you John I appreciate that so much thank you it means a lot to me sir and we're just going to bring this over 
So how we're going to do this is that in the coming weeks we're going to start with the airbrush underpainting and then and then as we're working on the underpainting then we're going to come in with pastel. We'll do that on Saturday night. I may do stuff some stuff off camera because they're only going to be one hour live streams so they might last they might go too long so so you see where I have a little bit of a uh, you know a darker color there rather than blend it I'm just going to lighten it up and then go over that if you have like a color that's dark you don't want to continually mixing it you can but you kind of muddy things up and you want to uh, you, you definitely want to um, keep it uh, you know as luminous as possible and Colette says she looks like she can walk off the canvas. Thank you. And thank you so much. I appreciate that, guys. And uh, little by little, she's coming together. I have to work on the hair. I want to work on the hair. And I think that's really going to bring her really to, to life. And what I have to do is keep, keep uh, making sure that there aren't anything that is too hard-edged, right? So keep working this around, and then I have this really nice dark here, you know, right in there. And what's happening when you're working in pastel, you're building a, a surface. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. And Jesus and everybody and John Diekman and, uh, hey, you know, and everybody. I really appreciate it. It's always great to have positive encouragement these days it's not as plentiful as we would think you know uh, so it's it's so great when there's an environment where everyone's so encouraging and accepting and it really is great so right here so here is so what I like to do when I see like there's hair over here I like to kind of triangulate, right? So here's our trapezius coming over here. And then we have this hair coming here. And then right about here, so it's kind of high up. This comes down and this comes over. We have some hair coming right about here. We're just going to put that in. That's going to help give some of the the life or gesture of her pose here. And we'll get more hard-edged and everything later. And now it's a cool idea. We can actually come in here and kind of work out some of the negative shape inside the hair, right? It's right here. And then we can come in with a lighter color. So sometimes, you know, when you're painting in pastels, you don't have the ability in airbrush to do this, which is carve out shapes from darker shapes. See how I'm able to carve that out? You couldn't do that in, in airbrush. Definitely not in this late stage. So that's why I think if a lot of the airbrush artists adopt this combination of pastels and an airbrush I know it's going to open up a world of color for you and just not having to worry about that blue shift right that blue shift is definitely no fun and you know why deal with something like that if you don't have to that's how I look at it just working on the trachea over here And we're going to come back here with the hair. So it's, it's fun to, to kind of carve things out. That's something that isn't available in my airbrush world, but in my pastel world, it definitely is. And it is liberating, let me tell you. See, her hair is very free, right? comes out here
Hey, what's up there, Mr. Kennedy? How you doing? Good to see you, sir. And so we're just uh, talking about the advantages of pastel over airbrush. And some of the advantages is you do not have to worry about blue shifts. So with this technique, you have all the advantages of airbrush by using an airbrush underpainting but going to color, you don't have to worry about blue shift, which is quite liberating, you know? And it's nice to work on the two of them. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kennedy. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you so much. So I saw your video. Uh, if you guys check out Mr. Kennedy's video, which is the airspace, and he talks about controlling the airbrush. So go check that video out. I found it very, very helpful to explaining to people who are, you know, just getting a handle on the airbrush. So definitely, definitely great. So check out that video. And he has a lot of great videos. I mean, just kick butt, right? Uh, and, but the great thing about Mr. Kennedy, he has beginner videos and he also has advanced videos and intermediate so if you haven't subscribed to that channel i highly recommend it oh how's your grandbaby doing mr kennedy and i know you're busy uh you know uh taking care of her and looking after her and i pray that she has a full recovery my friend i know that's very stressful it's hard to keep our minds on on things like that. Oh, she got to go home. That is such a blessing. Oh, man. I'm so glad to hear that. Oh, that's great. Okay, so, so yeah. So, at, so sh hopefully she'll be in remission and won't ever come back at the, uh, the cancer. So, I'm really praying that she, uh, oh, she had... Oh, she does have a bone marrow by her. I'm so sorry she has to go through that. That is so hard. It's hard. I know it's hard for you, you know? So that's rough. And so, as you can see now, as we're working here, we're bringing uh, some of the, the gesture of the pose, right? She has very free-flowing hair. Uh, remember that in the beginning I talked about the kind of orderly chaos that happens in nature. Like you see it all over, you know, with the, you know, when you look at the way branches kind of, you know, a large branch and you have the small branches and you look at it, they're not, they're not exactly like orderly like the way people do bricks, but they do have their own sense of order. But it's different than how we see things. And I think we have to do that when we're working on hair. So that's something to really. So you can see now I could really start to bring in some of these hairs. Yes, definitely. I appreciate all the good vibes going her way, which is good. And... Uh, so she's coming along nicely. We're taking, you know, with uh, Katya, we're we're just going slow, right? We're not we're not in any rush. And you'll see when you work, you just build this this skin texture, which is really fantastic, you know. And wow! So your daughter is going to be the marrow donor. Oh my goodness! Wow the ultimate sacrifice to you know go through a procedure for your loved ones that is that is amazing a little bit orange here before we go we have just one minute to go but as you can see she's coming along slowly but surely and that's what we want right when we're working on pastel just like anything else, pastel is a much faster medium than working in airbrush or, you know, or oils. That's what I love about pastels. You can see how fast we're going with this. 
and we can just go faster and faster but today just the takeaway we learned about color theory and all of that stuff which is really amazing and so uh, we hit the nine o'clock prayers out to uh, to you mr. Kennedy and your family so that is uh, you know definitely uh, you know she's in my prayers and everyone's and everyone thank you so much thank you so much jewel for the super sticker I appreciate it thank you everybody for hanging out this was a really a really nice hour on a Saturday night and as you can see we've gotten pretty far with this so you can see how she's coming and we're going to work on her hair so it's you know airbrushing is not just for uh, just for you know going in with color but airbrushing could be a beautiful underpainting for something like this to go over it in uh, pastel to still maintain the beautiful drawing and the tonal values you get with an underpainting in airbrush and then going over in pastel is the best marriage of two mediums as if they were made for each other and of course uh, you know check out inkflingers.com I do have the mentorship program where I will teach this technique in a very deep dive but I'll be doing this every Friday so guys, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the week. Take care, everybody, and I will see you on Wednesday. Have a good Sunday, everybody.